excited to worship with you. It's all for his glory, right? I was buried beneath my shame. Away, it was my turn till I met. Come on.
for you. Come on, Jared, you can sing it out. Every time my soul sings, will it sing for you?
Say 
one more time for the God that we serve this morning. Thank you, worship team, for leading us in that awesome time of worship. You can give someone a high five, a handshake, a hug. Tell them you're happy to see them this morning. It's a very special Sunday here. In case you haven't noticed, my name is Tori and I call Discovery my church home. And this is gonna be an awesome, awesome day. If you haven't seen, if you haven't heard, if you haven't read, it is Chosen Sunday here at Discovery. And you may or may not know what that means, but that's okay, you're here. That's all you need to know for now. We'll get into that a little bit later. But we are just so, so happy to see you. Old faces, new faces, whether you've called Discovery your home for the past week or two or for the past 20 years. Man, it's an awesome Sunday to be here. And if you are new, please, 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 we wanna connect with you. We wanna get in touch with you. You can do that in two ways. After the service, you can go out there to the lobby where a bunch of other stuff will be happening. But we have our welcome center. We have someone there that would love to connect with you, answer any questions questions that you may have if you request whatever whatever the need is uh, you can fill out a connect card and we have a gift card for you you can also do that digitally on the back of your chair we have a QR code that can connect you to our app to the welcome card there a digital welcome card that can connect you to giving at discovery whatever it is uh, we just want to say hi and welcome you for being here today can we give it up for our visitors this morning church what an awesome day you picked to be here. And we're gonna get into our giving time. If you are newer to Discovery, please, there's no pressure to give, but what an awesome Sunday. And especially it being the chosen World Vision Sunday to give faithfully into our home church. It's just such a special, special time. This organization that gives so much to so many around the world, how awesome is it for us to not, to not only support World Vision today, but also to support our local church who is the hub of everything today, making all of this happen through Discovery Church, right? in the heart of Elgin. So we're gonna do our giving this morning um, and we're just gonna pray over our giving right now. God, we thank you so much, Lord. It's such a special day, God. You're here, God. You're moving amongst your people, Lord. And we don't take it for granted, God. We thank you, God, uh, just for everything that you're doing here, God, for just being in the air this morning, being amidst our worship, God, as we gather together and declare who you are, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you, God, for the opportunity to give this morning, God, to faithfully sow into your house, God. Uh, you know, so many of us, we love to go to Home Goods and TJ Maxx and buy things for our house to look good, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, God, but how much more to make sure that God's house has the best, that God's house is looking good and is a welcome to an open door for people week after week, God. I believe it's a, a special calling you've given this house, Lord, to welcome people that no one feels like a stranger, that no one feels unworthy to walk through these doors, God. And we thank you for the opportunity each and every Sunday to give financially and to give by serving. So many ways we can give into the heart of your church. God, we thank you for it. We don't take it for granted. And the people of God said, amen, amen. amen. Ushers, thank you so much. You can go ahead and pass the buckets. And I just have a few announcements for you. They'll be real fast. Next week, of course, is Father's Day. Can we give it up for the fathers of Discovery? Which reminds me, let me know what you want for your Father's Day gifts. Go ahead and shout it out. Heckle, send an email. Do you guys, do, do dad still like Slim Jims or Slim we did some Slim Jims and peanuts and my husband was like, that's all that I need. So let me know what you're thinking of your gift. I assume you don't want the nail sets like the women, but hey, maybe, I don't know. So just let me know. <laughs> but next week is Father's Day and you're gonna see more orange next week because it's our chosen reveal Sunday. You're like, Tori, that sounds so cool. I have no clue what that means. That's awesome. You're gonna find out soon, okay? I'm not gonna take time now and tell you, but it's gonna be, you, if you thought today was really fun, tomorrow, I mean, next Sunday is gonna be even better. So you wanna be here for that. And then on the 28th, the last Wednesday of the month, we're keeping it alive with our uh, party theme throughout the whole summer. We're just gonna party the whole summer, no matter how hot it gets, no matter the city of Elgin's watching Encanto, it doesn't matter, the party's happening here, okay? We're gonna be having Hawaiian barbecue nights. <laughs> I'm saying that in faith because I don't know what I don't know what we're gonna do, but we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna barbecue something Hawaiian here on Wednesday, the 28th, and that's a family night. So bring your kids, bring your babies. Maybe don't bring your pets. Maybe if they're really cute. I don't know. I, we can't have any bites here on premises. So 
I don't know, but we're going to have a lot of fun here on the patio. We're going to deck it out for that. We just want to have a family fun night uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock, that last Wednesday of the month. And that's all that I have for you. So would you guys uh, join me in welcoming a guy who I think, I think you all know and I think you all love. You might catch him uh, eating a burrito on the lobby on a, on a Sunday morning or, you know, pouring his heart out, giving the word to us and shepherding us every week. But will you give it up for your pastor, Pastor Dan? Morning, Discovery. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good to see you here today. Hey, if you're brand new, again, want to give you a welcome. My name's Dan. I'm the lead pastor. Thanks for joining us. I don't know what happened to the weather. It was good all week, and then it changed, and it's going to be a little, like, rainy and cold and cloudy today, but I refuse to wear a long sleeve because it's summer. <laughs> I wear long sleeves all winter long. It is summer's turn, so, um, but we're glad you're here. Thanks for joining online. It's a special day. Uh, today is um, our chosen Encore Sunday. If you're new to Discovery, you're in for an incredible treat today. Um, God's gonna move in a very special way, um, has already. How many enjoyed that time of worship from, um, from our worship team? I love, love when we get together and do that. So um, today um, we have a guest speaker and his name is Steve Spear and he's, he's been, okay, well, there you go, there you go. Um, he's been with us um, uh, a handful of times in the past um, and we love Steve for a lot of reasons. On a personal level, um, I just really consider Steve a friend. I can't say that um, about a lot of people um, at that level, but he's truly, um, a friend, somebody that uh, I can actually trust, that I've leaned into a couple of times. Uh, Steve is a, um, is a pastor, served as a pastor for many years. Um, so he, he, he brings that calling, but he, um, he felt a call to, to make um, a difference in, in, a, in a bigger part of the world. And um, he's with World Vision now, as he's gonna talk about. But the thing that really drew me to Steve um, was the conversation I had with his son, Zach, and uh, he just told me that his father ran across the country some 3,000 3, miles in about 50 days. And um, he said it so casually. And I said, you know, come again, what was that? And I said, yeah, that's what I thought you said. Um, how come you never brought that up before? And I said, I gotta meet your dad. And uh, it's been, you know, history ever since. I truly do love this guy. I could say, I could just spend a lot of time up here um, talking about um, who he is, uh, his character uh, as a man of God, somebody who absolutely loves Jesus. And, and, and I could brag on this guy and his walk with God forever, but I'm gonna let, um, I'm gonna let him share his story because he tells it way much better. But Discovery, I really want us to open up our hearts today. Last week we talked about how um, it's about we live for the glory of God. Today we're gonna take a practical step in doing that and allowing you to make a difference in this world. You're gonna have an opportunity to step into an op a, 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 a possibility to make a difference in this world as a Christ follower. And even if you're not here, even if you're here and you are a Christ follower, uh, you're not a Christ follower, you can still be a part um, of something that's, that's bigger than you, which we all desire to be. So I'm gonna ask you to stand up, Discovery, would you just stand up? And with all the warm energy, Discovery, family love that we have would you put your hands together and welcome to the stage Steve Spear you are so kind oh. well thank you so much Pastor Dan you guys can take a seat thank you you're so kind Pastor Dan so very kind uh, it is a humbling privilege to hang out with you all again up in the upper deck you know, right side up here, left side, out in the, you know, the upper balcony area there. We love Discovery Church. We really do. And a warm welcome to all of you that are online as well. But this is just a great privilege to be with you. Um, it really, really is. I'm blessed by your pastor. I know you're blessed by your pastor. Can you, yeah, just give it up for Pastor Dan. I don't know where he went. Here he's back there. 
Um, so grateful for his heart for the word of God. So grateful for his heart for the church. Uh, so grateful for his heart for Elgin, his heart for the world, and what God is doing through your congregation right here. And he was just telling me not that long ago, 21 people proclaimed their faith in Christ by being baptized. That is amazing. And then the, uh, the biker blessing, the biker blessing that was done, like, yeah, man, like over 50 roaring motorcycles that received the blessing of God, and just, you know, more than, you know, the highest octane fuel, they had that in their tanks. And it's because of you all. And then the difference that you're making here locally, but the difference that you're making around the world as well. And not that many years ago, I showed up and we invited a bunch of you to run a marathon. To run a marathon in the name of the Lord and for the poor. And get this, over the last several years, over 75 of you have stepped, yes, 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 come on, give it. Over 75 of you have stepped way beyond your fears way beyond your comfort zones, and you've raised over $75,000 for clean water for the most vulnerable around the world. So um, you all, and, and I brag, you know, I'm in a, quite a few churches around the country. I brag on Discovery all the time, literally, because of who you are and what you do locally and globally, and you have the coolest church venue on the planet, on the planet. Um, one, of, one of my colleagues, I think Chuck Spears is right back over here. Give it up for Chuck Spears. He's right back here. Uh, Chuck Spears, we're, we're not related. I'm a spear with no S. He's a spear with an S because uh, he's sharper than I am. So he gets an extra S at the end of his name. I'm the, I'm the dull knife in the drawer. But I told Chuck, I said, man, Chuck, I can't wait. Chuck is from Nashville. I said, you, I can't wait for you to come to Discovery uh, because it is the coolest church venue on the planet. And, and, it, and it's special to us. I want to show you a picture. I want to give you an update of my family. This is my family. And some of you may know our son, Zach and Ashley, because they lived in the townhomes right here, right here from 2017 to 2018. And you all became their church home. Um, and as a dad, when your son uh, finds a church home, where they can grow in Christ and the work of Christ can be unleashed through their life, you're so thankful. So Dan, thank you for pastoring my kids. Um, and uh, so we've grown a little bit. Zach and Ashley have two kids. Bellamy will be three in September. Uh, this is little Sonny. He was born just like a couple of months ago. Uh, this is at their place. They live now outside of Carlsbad, up on top of a mountain, but this is at their home. And then, of course, my wife, Frances, and I, and our daughter, Chelsea, and our son-in-law, Joe. And this was taken like two months ago. And uh, so I bring you greetings. Uh, they're on their way to church right now. Otherwise, they'd be streaming and kind of watching in on the service. But um, I've said this before, but um, I think it was Easter of 2018. It was a... Uh, uh, the last Easter that my mother-in-law, she was the, the final parent to remain with us. Our other three parents had passed. And Easter of 2018, we sat up right up there top, top where you all are. And it was the most special memory to have been with you all on Easter Sunday 2018 and to sit up there and to watch my mother-in-law. And it was the following January she went to be with the Lord. But your church is deep within us. It's deep within me. And we're grateful for you and just wanted to say thank you for being a part of our lives and how good our God is, amen? He is, he is. So, um, so this morning, I have a confession for you. I have a confession. It's nothing tweet worthy, so don't, you don't have to pull out your phone or anything like that. Um, here's my confession. I don't have a tattoo. Now, a bunch, of you, a bunch of you are like, I don't really care, Steve. I don't care that you don't have a tattoo. Uh, um, here's the deal. I've got nothing against tattoos. Uh, my, my wife has one. My daughter has two. My, my best friends in the world have a tattoo. Uh, here's just the way that my little small brain works, though. It's that I don't feel like I've done anything big enough to warrant having a tattoo. I just, that's just my way my mind works. Now, when Michael Chitwood, he's the guy that launched Team World Vision in 2005. When Michael Chitwood uh, heard me say that, he said, are you nuts? Like in 2013, Steve, you ran across the United States. You ran from LA to New York. 
You ran 3,081 miles. You crossed 14 states. You went through 10 pair of ASIC running shoes. You consumed like 5,000 calories a day. You got attacked by some wild dogs, and you ate like you know, 1,000 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You, you raised over $500,000 for the most vulnerable. You should have the perimeter of the United States tattooed on your back. And I was like, my, I don't know. I just doesn't feel big enough, you know. But recently, I've been thinking about getting some ink. I've been thinking about it. I'm, I'm still too much of a wimp, I, I, but, I'm, but I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking. Now, if I were to get a tattoo, if I were to get one, it'd probably be like right over here, like on the wrist, and it would be something related to my life verse, which is Philippians 1.6. 14 words, 14 words. Being confident of this, if you're counting, this is more than 14, I get that. It's the 14 begins like right here. Um, being confident of this, you're kind of, some of you are kind of going, I don't think he can add. Um, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. And I've long believed that God uses people and circumstances in our lives, sometimes they're welcomed, and sometimes they're unwelcomed, to complete his good work in us, right? This is how our God works. He carries on this work that he does uh, to completion. I have one other confession to make for you, and this is this. I have way too many track jackets. Uh, don't judge me, don't judge me. I think I have like in excess of 50. Okay, again, um, I know some of you, he can't count, and I'm judging him right now, it's okay. <laughs> But I have about 50 track jackets. So by way of illustration, I'm gonna use some track jacket love to be a kind of a visible tattoo, if you will, for how God has completed his good work, not only in me, but how I've witnessed him completing his good work in others. So I'm gonna take out, it's, it's all right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna remove this one and put it on our friendly coat tree here and I'm gonna stick on this one. So this first track jacket, simply has the word run, the word run on it. So in 2006, a buddy of mine ran the Chicago Marathon with World Vision. The second year that World Vision had a team at the Chicago Marathon, there were 90 people. And my buddy Paul ran it. The next day he called me up and he said, hey Steve, you need to run the Chicago Marathon with me in 2007. I wasn't a runner, I hated running and wanted nothing to do with running. And I simply had a two letter answer for him which was, N O, <laughs> followed by the phrase, I hate running. But he kept being persistent. And he's saying, but you need to do this. It's for the most vulnerable. I said, that's great, I can write a check. He said, it's with World Vision. I said, I love World Vision. We sponsor several children. I can sponsor another child. I don't need to run. But he kept in and he kept in. And finally, a few months after he'd been pestering me, I had this little visitation from the Holy Spirit. Ah, well, you gotta watch out with these, right? A little visit from the Holy Spirit. And I was at our home in West Chicago and all by myself, and I heard this little still voice, not audible, but the still voice that said, hey Steve, you're a pastor, and all the time you're inviting people to step out of their comfort zones. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, you know, you know where this is going. All the time, you're inviting them to step beyond their fears. And the voice went something like this, why are you so unwilling to train for and run the Chicago Marathon? And I didn't have a good answer. And in that moment, I felt I was called. I'm supposed to do this. So I quickly established four goals for that first marathon. Goal number one, hate running less every time I ran. <laughs> Goal number two, these were not high goals, you guys. Goal number two was to train well enough just to make it to the starting line. That's all I wanted. Goal three was to finish before they closed the course. <laughs> true story, true, true story. Uh, that, that year, the official finishing time of the Chicago Marathon was six hours. I finished, I wasn't aware of this until I actually saw it in the records afterwards. Not that this, everybody gets the record, it was a world. Um, and my finishing time was 5.59.59. Yeah. Come on. It was one one hundredth of a second. <laughs> I, I did it. And then the fourth goal was to raise $1,000 for clean water. But more than anything, I totally thought it was going to be a one and out deal. But you see, God completed something in me. He furthered his work in me. Yes, I got into the best shape of my life. 
more than anything, though, God taught me the richness of friendship. Um, I don't know how many of you are introverts. I'm an introvert. By nature, you might look at I am an introvert. I refuel by being alone. I also was born and raised in the state of Vermont. So Vermonters are best known for their rugged individualism. When you combine an introvert with somebody who's bent on being a rugged individualist, you have a recluse and a hermit. You do. And you have someone that doesn't do that well sharing their life. And God is tearing down of training and being with people. Something happened that first season that opened me up to friendships like I'd never been opened up to before. And God did something in my heart to grow, to complete his work because God works through us to one another. This is what he does. And you can ask anybody that has run the 75 people from Discovery who's run the half of the full marathon and they say, God completed something in them. It's what he just does. So this track jacket, number one, very important in the fact that God uses things to complete and he grew my heart of compassion far more than I ever could have imagined. Okay, that's track jacket number one. Let me give you track jacket number two. This one, after a few years of running some marathons with World Vision, I had a, Michael Chitwood, the guy that started Team World Vision, who's a good friend, he said, hey Steve, uh, I would like for you to uh, run the 56 mile, you heard me right, 56 mile Comrades Ultra Marathon in South Africa with World Vision. He asked me this uh, on, a, on a Friday afternoon in November. And this was in 2000, uh, 2011, Friday afternoon, 2011, he invited me to say, hey, I want you to run the Comrades Ultra Marathon. Now, I didn't much like running 26 miles. So the idea of running 56 miles, no thank you at all. Well, once again, God had that same kind of word, Steve, step beyond the fears, step out of the comfort zone. I had four goals for that race. I hate running less every time I ran train well enough to make it to the starting line. This is in Peter Maritzburg, South Africa. 12,000 feet of aggregate elevation change over 56 miles in the hills of Af South Africa. So I said, I just want to train well enough to get to the start line in Peter Maritzburg, and then I want to finish before the 12 hour mandatory close. 12 hour mandatory close, that was my goal. And then the fundraising goal, get this, for an individual, the fundraising goal was $400,000 for one person, one person. One person. And I was like, God, I'm scared spitless about this whole thing. But God kept on saying, Steve, I, ha I have something in this for you. So anyway, uh, there's a lot of stories I could tell you about comrades. Uh, one I will just tell you that happened at mile 44. Uh, mile 44. The day hadn't gone well for me. My stomach has hurt uh, a bunch during the day. Any food that I was trying to ingest over the course of the run was not staying down. I had to stop and use the loo, the bathroom, the porta potty, the honey bucket, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> I had to, I, there was, I visited that thing many times over the course of the course, and I, by mile 44, I was done, completely out of gas, and I'd gone off to the side of the course, and again, this is the largest ultra marathon in the world, over 15,000 people do it, it's a huge event in South Africa, everything shuts down in South Africa for comrades, it's a huge thing. But at mile 44, I was done. I came off to the side and just sat in the kind of the weedy grass, put my head down between my knees and just sat there waiting for the SAG bus to come pick me up because I was done. I was feeling sorry for myself and sitting there. Uh, all of a sudden, with my head down, I heard a voice from the road simply said, hey, you, over there, get up. And I'm like, what? And I kind of look up, and here's this older guy. He said, you, over there, in the grass, you get up. You're not going to finish this race sitting there. Get up, right now. And I'm like, bug off, buddy. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, I, I don't want nothing to do with this. Now, he's older, and I'm old school, so I was like, you know, respect your elders. And so I thought, all right, I'll get up. So I get up, and he said, come on, get over here. You're not going to finish this race sitting there. You need to walk with me. Everything in me said no. Everything said no. But I thought, I'll walk with him. So we just started walking. And then we picked up the pace a little bit. And then we ran a little bit. And then he said, okay, you're gonna, he said to me, you're gonna do better than me. I'm gonna fall back, you go ahead. And I said, wait a second. This was a complete, complete bait and switch. But I tell you what, that man's encouragement 
completed something in me, right? I mean, isn't this like our God? Sometimes we're the one giving the encouragement. We're the ones that are in that place, but then there are times we need to receive that encouragement. We need to, and in that, God completes his good work in us in a very, very powerful way. But I'll never forget that moment of that race and how God used that in a very special way. And then six months after, six months after that race, uh, again in, in, in November uh, of 2012, I was, uh, November 2000, yeah, 2012, 2011 rather, I was out on an innocent six mile run near my in-laws home in Ohio. And on mile three of that run, on US Route 40 outside of St. Clairsville, Ohio, I had another visitation from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's voice went something like this, wasn't audible, but it simply said, Steve, you're to run across the United States for the good of others. I thought that was a bad taco from the night before. I mean, that was like weird, like a very weird thought. And I was so freaked out by that thought, I didn't even tell my wife about it for like two months. Because like, who hears that? And what do you even do with that kind of a thought? And for the next 12 months after that, once I got the courage to tell my wife, uh, well, you'll do this here coming up this summer. You maybe haven't gone out to the pool or the beach yet, but what happens when you take a beach ball and you push it under the surface of the water? What happens? Pops back up, you push it down in it, pops back up. Yeah, you got totally, yeah. for the next 12 months, that's exactly what I did with that vision. That vision, that's what we do when we don't like something, we put in air quotes. That vision <laughs> from the Lord, I kind of went that gymnastic thing after like 12 months of that I just put my arms up and surrender and I said God I know you're calling me to devote myself more to running and how running changes lives and if the vision of this is a run from LA to New York filled with more unknowns than I can count I'm in I don't get it but I'm in so my wife and I did what all sane people do. I resigned my pastoral position of over 16 years here in the Chicagoland area. My wife sold and liquidated a 3,000 uh, brick and mortar, uh, 3,000 square foot brick and mortar antique shop that she had built in West Chicago. And, and I trained for it and we did, and I did the hardest thing that I arguably have ever done, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And the driving question is why? Why would I, why would we do this? because God was completing his work in me to further grow my heart of compassion for others. God had been on this trajectory of increasing my heart of compassion for others. And I think because I'm a slow learner, he said, you need to run across the United States. <laughs> like, I, like, you need some remedial work here, Steve. And we're gonna run across the United States and you're gonna have your heart broken for the poor. You're gonna have your heart broken. And this past week, a ton of you from the Discovery family, you stepped into an experience, not all of you, but a bunch of you stepped into an experience called the Matthew 25 Challenge, where you experientially, this week, one day you went out, you went without one meal for the day. One day you only drank water to identify with millions who don't have access to clean water. You slept on the floor. If you did the Matthew 25 challenge this past week, you slept on the floor on Wednesday night to identify with the refugee. And for kids that are little, sleeping on the floor is a blast. You know, you get to be like 59. It's like, ah, sleeping on the floor is not so much fun anymore. But God does something within us as we hear and read about the, you know, Matthew 25, Jesus said these words. He said, come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, you know this, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And I love this, the righteous answer Jesus almost quizzically in the text. Think about it, almost a very quizzical and they said, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? And then the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. You did it for me. Jesus talked about caring for the poor and the most vulnerable 
almost more than anything else in his time on earth. And he calls us, he calls us to receive the most hurting around us as what? As family, as family. Because when we do this, when we receive the most hurting around us as family, what does he do? He completes his good work in us. This is what he does. And some of you have met before, and in case you haven't, I wanna introduce her to you. And if you've heard about her before, I don't think you'll tire of hearing again. But I wanna tell you about a seven-year-old girl who changed all of this for me. This is Winnie. Uh, she's a seven-year-old. When we met her, almost uh, coming up right on 10 years ago, when I first met Winnie, this is a child, one of the children that Francis and I began sponsoring just ahead of the U.S. run. And this is when I had the uh, unbelievable chance to meet her in August of 2012. And it was on this day we met Winnie. Uh, before this picture was taken, we met at their very humble home in the Rift Valley area of Kenya. And we then, after some greetings, we walked one mile to their water source. That you can, it's kind of a, a pond type of a thing. And when we got to this water source, I was very curious about several things. Uh, this is my first trip uh, to Kenya when I went. And I remember talking to Justina, Winnie's mother. We were right there on the shore of this little pond. And I asked Justina, I just didn't know. And I said, Justina, where is it that you wash your clothes? And she said, right here. And then I said, and where do you all bathe? And she said, right here. And then I could see around the perimeter of this thing, you can't see it in this picture, but there were livestock that were drinking and relieving themselves into the water source. And then we, which just blew my mind, then we took these containers and we dipped them down. Winnie would do this three times a day with her mom. And, and we dipped it in, and I knew the water that was filling this old vegetable container, vegetable oil container, I knew the water filling this would kill half the kids under the age of five in Winnie's village. It's called the infant mortality rate. And there's a smile on my face here, but as water filled that, my heart was breaking, literally breaking. Uh, and uh, I was just thinking of Winnie and the thousands of kids like her that wouldn't have a shot. And then I carried that one mile back to her home. Full, weighs 50 pounds. So you think of an old school microwave on your shoulder. And I'm telling you, Discovery family, that one mile walk back to Winnie's home wrecked me. It wrecked me. There was a seismic shift that happened in this, you know, individual, rugged, you know, rugged individualist from Vermont. A seismic shift happened in me that day, and I literally have not been the same since. Because as I said, my heart was breaking for Winnie and the thousands of kids that were like her that maybe wouldn't have this shot of fullness of life. But then I learned, because I didn't know all of this at that point, but then I learned how our $39 a month was being pooled together with the $39 of other people and children within Winnie's village that would bring, you know, not only clean water, but education, you know, healthcare, microfinance, and even an introduction to Jesus. Because one of the cool things that we do when we go into villages, and which happens most of the time, one of the first things that's needed to be done is clean water. So we've got this program called Jesus, the Source of Living Water. So as clean, fresh water is brought for the soul, Jesus' is living water, or clean, fresh water for the body, Jesus' is living water is brought for the soul. And it's an amazing, so, so get this, uh, this next image uh, on the, the left side is when I met Winnie like over 10 years ago. This is the, the last time that I saw Winnie was in this, just before COVID kind of shut everything down. And I tell you what, uh, over on this, this, your left side, this is before she had a fullness of what you know, life could look like in a lot of different ways. Uh, they now have access to clean water, which is pretty amazing. Uh, Winnie's excelling in her school. Uh, her mom, Justina, is a rock star. And God has birthed some microfinance things within their world. She has her own little livestock business, a garden business. We've had a chance to kind of partner alongside of that to see it grow. And their, their family is just completely different. And the, the icing on the cake is, is um, Winnie continues. She's continuing to do this. Every Sunday, Winnie teaches 20 to 25 smaller children truths from Scripture like we hear right here at Discovery. I mean, this is, yes. This is God's completing work. And Winnie coming into our lives ahead of the U.S. run, this little girl who we've now hung out with three times since first meeting her, 
She has not only become family, you all, she's redefined family for us. God has used her to complete his good work in us. And this is when this final, this kind of this final track jacket sort of comes into play, is how you all have stepped into this in a pretty amazing way. Two years ago, almost to the day, June 13th, 2001, June 13th, 2001, you all, the Discovery family, you all expanded your family by being one of the first churches, literally, by being one of the first churches in the United States to flip the script on child sponsorship with World Vision. So for 70 years, the way that we as World Vision would invite somebody to sponsor a child is you'd hear some kind of a talk like this or what have you, and you'd go out onto a lobby, and there you would see dozens and dozens of picture folders hanging on some string, and then you would go out and you would choose a child to choose from. You've done this at concerts, you've seen this kind of a thing set up before, but God was working within us that he might do something different. And God led us to ask a question but you made it a reality. He asked us a question, but you at Discovery made it a reality. What would it look like if for the first time ever, the script was flipped, and instead of us choosing a child, what if the child was empowered to choose us? What if that could happen? What if God could do some completing work in a child by letting them have the dignity of choosing a sponsor versus the other way around? And as you may have heard, on June 13th, 2021, 53 people from the Discovery family decided to take your $39 a month and pool it together with the $39 of other people in Baba, Ecuador to make a difference in the lives of children in a village within Baba, Ecuador. Man, it was crazy. You all responded in such a powerful way. You went out to the lobby. You had an epic picture taken, and then the following Wednesday, your picture hung on some string in some churches in Baba, Ecuador, and children chose you. Yes, it was amazing. They wrote you a letter. It was crazy. It was crazy. And I tell you what, Baba, Baba is, a, it is a beautiful part of the world filled with beautiful children who simply lack the basic resources to thrive, simply lack that. They are full of hope, though they have so little. And honestly, the pioneering work that God is doing here at Discovery within Elgin and pairing that with the pioneering work that we're doing within Baba alongside churches and community leaders, I'm just telling you, it is not a coincidence. And we wanted to show up and do two things. We wanted to show up with a video to thank you, but we also wanted to say, God, is there more? Do you want further completion in some ways that you want to open up to us? So as you look at this video, uh, I pray you sense God's favor. I pray you sense God's favor in a very rich way. But I also pray, as in Hebrews it says, that we could continue to spur one another on a bit more as well. So take a look at this. We can re-roll it if you want, if, it, if we want. We want to re-roll it from the top. Thank you. 
بچه You know, I, I really hope as uh, you watch that, that you would have been sensing God's favor, that you would be sensing his completing work that he's been doing in the children's lives in Baba, the completing work that he's doing in yours. But I also hope you're gripped by that phrase in the video that we're not done yet. Uh, there are still several hundred children in Baba that are waiting to be sponsored. And I got to tell you, I am blown away. I am completely, 100% blown away by Pastor Dan's faith and vision. The leaders here at Discovery to say, what if, what if there could be an encore performance? What, what if this could be repeated? And what if another 50 people said yes to being chosen? What would that look like? So we want to invite you, each and every one of you, to become a child sponsor, to say yes to sponsoring one of the hundreds and kids in Baba who are still waiting to wait on someone and how your $39 a month will be pooled together just as with Winnie's to complete the good work that God is doing and has begun in them. And for those of you that said yes, oh, we want to say thank you. We are so grateful to you. Grateful for you to have said yes. And perhaps the Lord may be, I don't know if he will, but maybe the Lord may want to invite you, your heart to be open for maybe one more. And if you're hearing this for the first time this weekend, my encouragement to you is be chosen. Because this Wednesday in Baba, Ecuador, your pictures that will be taken in just a few moments out in the lobby will hang in some churches in Baba and a child will choose you. And then they're going to sit and write you a letter for why they chose you. And then uh, one week from now, you're going to get an envelope here at church when you come to church next weekend. And you'll be able to open that envelope and see the child who chose you holding your picture. I've seen this done many times now. And something quite transformational happens when you open that envelope. God meets you in that place. There's a completion work that he does. And that God would use us for this kind of a thing. And I'm uh, going to pitch things back over to Pastor Dan and I'll come up at the very end and just give you a couple of next steps about what you'll do to do all of this. But to have had Pastor Dan and the Discovery family here say yes and now to say yes again and to reflect on what he's done and what he's going to do is pretty amazing. So, uh, Pastor Dan. Hey, let's give it up for Steve for sharing that incredible message here today. All right, hey, can we turn the lights up on the house just for a second? So here, here's where we're going today. And uh, we started this last week. Um, that, that video, the emotion of that video is as real as it gets. We experienced that a few years ago. For those of you that have participated, you know how real that is. When you, when you signed up on, um, on Chosen Sunday and then on Reveal Sunday, you went into the lobby and, and you found your, your, your envelope hanging on the wall and you picked it and you opened it up and you saw the child that picked you. You know how powerful that was. So, uh, Glenn and Beth, um, who God has called in our church, um, Glenn's going to be doing an ultra marathon soon here in September. Uh, uh, Iron Man in September. Yeah. Um, it's only 1.2 mile swim, a 50, 2.4 mile swim, 120, 112 mile bike. 26.2 miles so it's not that much <laughs> Glenn's got a goal of of 50 kids from Baba Ecuador um, to be able to be chosen so that they can have the support when we started this it was just about bringing fresh water it's way beyond that now it's about education it's about um, it's about um, um, health care for them. 
Um, it's about teaching them life skills. It's just gone way beyond fresh. Fresh water was the catalyst. But uh, this week I had the privilege of being a Zoom call with um, the leaders in Baba Ecuador working with World Vision, um, the, the frontline people on the ground working with the kids in that community. And they're just sharing stories of the, the challenges that these, these kids have to go through. And I wish you could have all seen that and experienced that Zoom call. It was, it was heart-wrenching, but it was encouraging at the same time. Um, Discovery, we started this a couple years ago. I don't know why God connected us and, and this place across the world, uh, Baba Ecuador, but he did. And so we're gonna finish that work and we're gonna give our church the opportunity to do that today. But I'm just thinking, um, you know, those kids walking into the room and looking up and seeing pictures of anybody here today who would take that next step and say, yeah, I, I, want, I want to be a part of this chosen event. And so they're going to see your picture hanging there. I can't imagine as they walk in, this is one of the very few things in their life where they actually have a choice to do. They don't have very many choices over there like we do. They see those pictures and they probably think, look at all those millionaires on the wall. Look at all these rich and influential people. Wow, look at, look at them. Look at how they dress. Look at their watches. You know, look, look at their gold jewelry. Look at, look at I mean, they, they, must, they must be so happy and rich, those Americans. That's what they're thinking. And then we here in America say, look at those rich people. Look how, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's really a matter of perspective, but we get the opportunity to give them a choice to make a difference in their life. And let me say, this is all done in the name of Jesus. It's not to glorify man, it's to glorify God. And we, we talked about that all last week. This is not for my glory, your glory, discovery. This is not to make us, you know, feel good, look at us, go, go brag, you know. This is about the glory of God. This is making a difference in this world until his final kingdom comes. So that's the invitation here today and Steve's gonna come back up and he's gonna give you some exact steps but I just want to say as your pastor um, we're 100% behind this as a church we did it a couple years ago we have a lot of new people that have joined since then we wanted to give you the opportunity as your pastor um, I'm taking the lead um, my wife and I are sponsoring another child um, this year we're, we're doing it we got one we're gonna sponsor another child um, we're gonna we're gonna be part of chosen. So even if you did, hey, um, it's just a little over a dollar a day, a cup of coffee a day, a donut a day, because donuts are expensive now. By the way, I don't know. It, it, that that's really that's really all it is to make a tremendous difference um, in this place, Baba Ecuador, that God has connected Discovery to across the world. It will absolutely make a difference and it will change your life and it will help you and your and listen it's gonna make a difference in your walk with Jesus which at the end of the day that's what the goal has been I'm gonna ask um, pastor, uh, pastor Steve to come back up here he's gonna give you some direct uh, specific instructions um, I just pray that you open up your heart today if it's something you don't want to do hey no guilt no shame um, I believe he's also gonna have instructions for some people online but this is a special Sunday. This is a Sunday where we, we're gonna step out, we're gonna do something uncomfortable, and we're gonna give the glory to our Father in heaven. Amen, Discovery? Amen? Come on. Amen. Pastor Steve. Okay, so um, two years ago when we did this, uh, you and Laura, there's a little unfair advantage. You had Baxter in the picture. They did go number one in the draft uh, last two years ago. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty, and even there's, uh, it was kind of a surprise this last week when we did a Zoom call. We had a chance to have uh, Dan and Laura's sponsor child give a greeting uh, to, to Dan. And then uh, Beth and Glenn's uh, child was able to give them a greeting as well. It was pretty special. But they talked about your dog, which is pretty fun. Um, but, you know, um, thank you for opening yourself up to this idea. Thank you for allowing God to say, how could he use uh, the pooled resources of ourselves to lift this community literally out of poverty for good? And it's one of the most exciting things in God's transforming work, completing work that'll happen to you and us. So there's really just a couple of steps. Step number one, 
You can do this. Some of you have your phone out already uh, just saying, man, that was a really good speaker at church today. I'm kidding. I'm totally putting you on. Um, just go ahead and pull out your phone and open up a text message. I'll tell you your first. There's only two steps. Open up a text message. And there's this is on your, uh, your little handout on your seat. But if you will have this slide come up right now that will show you. You're going to text the word discovery to 56170. So just pull out your phone and you put discovery sort of in the message portion. I'm doing it right along with you. Put in discovery. And then up at the top, you put, uh, put it to 5, whoops, 56170. 56170. Uh, okay, uh, you guys are doing that good. And then you just hit send. And then in a moment, what will happen is that you'll get a little a ping. Uh, you'll just get a little bump here on your phone in just a second. Mine hasn't hit yet, but it just takes, sometimes takes a minute or two to, based on a uh, cell service or what have you. But when that hits you back again, you're going to get a link uh, to start filling something out. Okay, mine just hit back. So then you just click on that link. And then you just begin filling out some information. The very first question that you get asked is, how many children would you like to be chosen by? And again, two years ago, if you were part of this, uh, we say thank you, and maybe God is opening your heart for one more. If this is your first time, I want to encourage you uh, to be among us to do this. Uh, a few months ago, I was at a church, and just before the service started, a guy heard that I was coming, and we were talking about World Vision. He really didn't know what we were going to be talking about. He had no idea. Before the service, he said, I just want to let you know, Pastor, the number seven hit me on my way to church, and I just wanted you to know that. And I was like, okay. Then we did the service, and then after the service, he came up to me, and he said, is it okay if we're chosen by seven children? And I was like, well, yeah, it's, you can. And I said, so you do it. You're going to, you just, I told him what I'm just telling you, you just bump that thing up to seven. I was pretty, pretty much blew my mind. What will happen is we're just going to take your picture and, you know, it'll, ride, it'll show up at a, several different times at the choosing parties. So, again, whatever that number is, you just put that and then you begin filling out a bit more information. I can see some of you doing that already. If, for those of you that are online, the same thing. You just start filling out this information. Just do it online. Once you're done filling out some information, which will take just a minute or so, um, then you're going to be prompted uh, to, eat, to take a QR code and either it will say, go to the lobby and get your picture taken or upload one. So if you're at home, you can simply upload a picture once that comes your way. But for those of us that are here, fill out the information, and then you're going to go out for step number two, which is to take the most epic picture of your life. It will. It's going to hang on some string and baba. And this next Wednesday, literally children with hope in their heart and smiles on their faces, they're going to walk into a room, and they're going to see you. And what's really cool is that we have a Facebook group, uh, that a closed Facebook group just for the Discovery family that we've, um, I think we got a picture of what it looks like here. Yeah. What will happen is we're going to try to capture some images from the choosing party and upload this to this group. And for those of you that are online, you can have a chance to be part of the family here. It'll kind of connect us. You can see people who said yes being chosen. You can high five one another, all this kind of stuff. But this is our way to kind of bring the whole family together. But again, you'll go take this picture. It's epic. And then the thing that you don't want to forget is be here next Sunday because uh, that's when you're going to get the packet that says uh, who chose you. And you'll see your child holding your picture. Again, out in the lobby, we have people, if you've already sponsored a child or you're sponsoring one, you can write a letter to your sponsored child uh, out in the lobby as well today. We've got that all set up for you. If you're having any technical difficulties online, we've got people online that can help you. Uh, we've got a team of volunteers to help us. If you don't have your phone or something's going glitchy with yours, we've got you totally covered out in the lobby. And then just one other thing, you have to get all of this done. We can put that, can we put that other slide back up there, the closing one that has the discovery and 56170. Wait, we can leave this one up here. Here's the thing, you've got to do this before 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, this gives our team and Bob a plenty of time to print off your pictures and have them ready for the choosing party on Wednesday. So, um, as always, you all, this is such a pleasure to be with you. You encourage my heart. You, you are mutually encouraging my faith so that I stay on track in serving our great God. And he's completing his work in me through you. And I'm so thankful to you and thankful Pastor Dan. And this is going to be a blast. Can't wait to meet you. Can't wait to see a bunch of us have our pictures taken. And then be back here next week for Reveal Sunday. For those of you online, we'll send it to you digitally so you'll see your Reveal picture as well so we get you covered. So God bless you guys. Thank you. Amen. Let's give it one more time for Steve. Amen. Thank you, Steve. We love you, brother, so much. We really do. We honor you. Thank you.
Um, and I might get a tattoo if we reach 50. How about that? I might, I might, the key word in that sentence. I might get a tattoo if we reach 50. Well, you, you said you were going to get a tattoo. Well, I, I, are we putting it down? Well, it's on film. It's on, it's on the internet. Oh, we're both going to get one? Oh, no, no. You're really going to get your own tattoo for running across the country. I'm never going to run across the country. But if we get 50, uh-oh, I, I started something. There's, you'll, they'll need less ink on my uh, <laughs> uh, thing, but I'm in. <laughs> Ever since I turned 50, I would not wanted to get a tattoo. Uh, all my nieces and nephews have them, um, except one, but I won't, I won't say her name. <laughs> Victoria, I won't say her name. I love her. I love her. But everyone else, they're tatted up like they're like a canvas. And um, so maybe this could be the time. In the name for Jesus, for the honor and glory of God. It, it, this is all selfish. I'm sorry. Anyway, hey, let's all stand up. <laughs> if you're going to do that here today, um, man, it, it's, it's, it's going to be amazing. Just walk out into the lobby. You'll see the people, people directing you. We'll have music going. You'll see where you can take your picture. It's going to be something absolutely amazing. Hey, Discovery absolutely love my church thank you so much for making today an amazing day thank you steve for joining us here today um we love you we love your family always been a part of us honor you brother thanks thanks for inspiring us here today thanks for inspiring us so father thank you thank you thank you again god for for showing up and thank you god for 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 speaking to our hearts Thank you, God, because you, 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 don't, you don't force us. You, 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 you love us. You send your Holy Spirit to continue to lead us and guide us and, and bring us back to center. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity, again, to be part of something bigger that you're doing in this world. Father, we do this for your honor and for your glory. Let this week be, God, the week um, where, where people's lives are changed and transformed. God, let this week be a week where there's just some, some, some uh, divine revelation, where, 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 God, you're meeting people where they're at, things that they've been praying about, things that they've had questions about, things that maybe they've been struggling with, things that they've been seeking you about, questions that they've had. Father, I just pray that this week, supernaturally, you, you move in each and every one of, of, of our lives. And let this be a week of change and transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Love you, Discovery. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.